Now let's go to the uh, uh, talk, our talk for this month, commitment. Our talk will be uh, provided by uh, Marcia Gildert Murphy. Uh, I have known Marcia since 2014. Uh, where is Marcia? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have known Marcia since 2014 when I was his intern in Sequoia Engineering and Environmental. Uh, Marcia is a civil engineer and she has passion about infrastructure and civil engineering. She is the uh, director of seventh uh, chapter of American Society of Civil Engineers. She's a mom, she's an author and a blogger, and she right now f works for a construction company. So please give her applause and we will start with Marcia. Thank you. Thank you, Sia. So it's always awkward when you hear people talking about what you're doing. It's like, Boy, she's really busy, isn't she? <laughs> um, I wanted to first start out by saying that I'm not sure what uniquely qualifies me to be standing here in front of you and talking about commitment, because honestly, any one of you could be up here sharing about commitment. We live it every day, right? Everybody was committed to be here today. Um, we all have different aspects that we commit ourselves to. Um, I wanted to start out with this picture because that's me, this chubby little girl right there sucking on a sucker. And um, I, I look back at little Marcia. I grew up in Inglewood, California. And I, I don't ever look back in regret or judgment, but I look back and think, wow, how did she get here? You know, what, what happened along the way? What did she commit herself to that she's here today? And I'm always kind of impressed that I, I honestly believe that we have choices that we make every single day that get us to where we are today. And I truly believe when I see people that are down in their situations that I could be there easily had I made one choice differently along the way. Sometimes it's just one choice. Um, so I wanted to put that up there, little Marcio with my little brother Robert and my beautiful mother Karen because I think it's always good just to remember where we came from. Like I said, not in judgment or regret, just to kind of revel in how we made it to where we are today. Let's see if I can manage this. So when Sia called me and asked me if I would speak about commitment, I always like to understand what, what is the compass that I use for this subject. And so I like definitions. So I thought, well, I'm going to look up the definition of commitment. And I saw this, and I thought, OK, state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. All right, that's good. But I'm going to give you what I think my definition, my definition of commitment is. It's when you give a piece of yourself, your heart, your soul, your spirit, to something that is important to you. And it can be anything. It can be something related to your health. It can be something related to your philosophy about life. Um, my daughter is personally very committed to prison reform. And God love that child. She has been committed since she was about Eddie's age. Um, and so it can be almost anything, but it's, it is truly when you give a piece of yourself to that, that is a commitment. And um, so I thought, yeah, this is okay, but I wanted to add to it. So where do we go from here? Um, I think that it's really, truly important to sort of do a self-assessment. What am I committed to? 
What did I decide that is important to me? What's so important to me that I'm willing to give a piece of myself to this, to really dedicate myself to focus on it? And when I look at myself, I have, I have a variety of commitments we all do. I committed to be here today. I'm a committed vegetarian. Um, I commit every morning at four o'clock in the morning to walk my dog, Ava. <laughs> so there are all sorts of commitments that we make, but when I looked back at the history of myself over the years and thought about what's really important to me, I look at the lens of potential when I see everybody. So that's why I started this conversation by saying, any one of you could be standing up here because I do see the potential in everybody. And it's probably the engineer in me, you know, all material has potential energy. Um, I particularly love children because they have this bright shining light of potential that hasn't been diminished. We all have it, but theirs is right there out loud and I always try to have interactions with people where I can inspire and support their potential. So that is a commitment I have and I stay with. It's a choice I make, it's a focus that I stay with. And when I met Sia in 2014 and he was an intern with me, I just saw the potential that he has and still does, and I revel in it. And I'm, and I'm not um, just particularly focused on people who think the same way as me or do the same things as me. As a matter of fact, I find it very interesting to understand people who don't think like me or look like me or do the things I do. I wanna understand where they got to where they are and what potential they have, because I truly believe everyone has potential, and I'm committed to that. So I saw this quote, and I thought that this was really helpful to this subject. So um, Nassar Sr. is a 19th century economist. He's not a philosopher, or maybe he's a philosoconomist, but um, it says, to obtain from the enjoyment which is in our power or to seek distant rather than immediate results are among the most painful exertions of the human will. So when it comes to commitment, we make a commitment, whatever it is. And then, you know, we're, we have this indulgement that's maybe a little easier. So I have this commitment Let's say I'm committed to being a vegetarian, but then I'm at this event and there's something that's really good and it's not consistent with my diet, but it'd be really easy to take this little indulgement. And that's okay, that's all right. But if we do that day after day, what's the end result, right? If we're focused on this dream, this goal, if we're looking at bigger commitments, and we indulge ourselves in what's easier along the way, and that becomes the habit, that becomes the norm, then how do we achieve where we're trying to go? So I think that it's important to remember that the commitment and focus of our present self to achieve the goals and dreams of our future self needs to overcome the indulgences and some of the habits of our past self. So um, it's all about being present. It's all about being in the present moment. Um, and that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about on the next slide. So. Whenever I'm thinking about doing anything or focused on any cause or goal or dream, I always think where, when, how. So with commitment, where is now? And when, where is here? When is now? 
and how is integrity to yourself, right? So you've decided that you want to do something, okay? Whatever that is, whatever that goal is, whatever that dream is, whatever you want to achieve. And it all starts with yourself. A lot of times, particularly now, we have this royal wedding happening, and people think about commitments when you're committed to other people, in a relationship, things like that. But really, your first commitment is to yourself, right? It's your integrity to what you told yourself you're going to focus on. So that's where it starts for all of us. If we can't commit to ourselves and have integrity to, with ourselves, with our focus and our goals, how can we ever commit to anything else? So it has to start here. This is your first test. This is where it all starts. It starts here, now, and integrity with yourself. Um, and, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to always get it right, but that's sort of the guiding principle when it comes to commitment, I believe. So, uh, your dreams. All that stands between you and the life of your dreams is what you choose to focus on. And I wanted to share a couple of insights based on my journey that I think speaks to this. Um, I used to work with an ontological coach, and I remember at the time thinking, what in the heck is an ontological coach? So she is also called a life coach, and this is the best analogy I can use, and I made this up myself. I actually told Lynn this. I said, it's like I'm on a journey. We've decided to do this hike together. I get to decide what path we're taking. I get to decide where we're going. But she's there with her pack and her tools and she's making suggestions and she's supporting me and, you know, um, sort of helping me along the way, asking questions about why are you going that way? Uh, what about this? And so that's what working with a life coach was like for me. And one day we were in a session and I was having a pity party and I was like, oh my gosh, this person wronged me and they did this and it affected me negatively and so I'm, you know, this whole situation is ruined because of the actions of this other person. And I was railing on and I was all upset and she just sat there looking peaceful like she always did and when I finished my little pity party rant, she said, how disempowering. <laughs> I was like, what? Disempowering? What do, you, what do you mean? And she goes, well, it sounds very disempowering. It sounds like you let your power go. You know, I was, I was I'm going to be frank with you. I was mad. I was angry. And the more I thought about it, and she was once again making a suggestion, asking a question, but let me wander on my path. I sort of wandered off a little bit. And this is a really important concept because when it comes to commitment, it's about the choice that we make. The choice that we make about what we want to focus on, right? And we get to decide what every situation, every encounter, every challenge that we have, we get to decide what that means and what power we're gonna take over our lives to continue on the path that we've chosen. And that's about commitment. So about two years ago, I was at a hotel in Washington, D.C., and I got on an elevator. And that's the last thing I remember. About two hours later, my husband got a phone call from the hospital and said, you need to get your affairs in order. Um, I, we don't think your wife's going to make it. And what happened on that elevator, we'll never know, and it really doesn't matter. It's not germane to this story. But 45 days in the hospital, I learned to talk again, to walk again, to eat again, and to live again. 
and, and, and here I'm standing before you now. And I got to choose what that event meant to me. And we can decide with each and every one of these, com you know, these events and our commitment to our goals and, and our dreams, we get to decide what they mean. So I could decide, was that event an anchor that I'm gonna tie to my ankle for the rest of my life? I could choose that. I can hear Lynn saying, how disempowering. <laughs> but I can choose that. Or I can decide that's a balloon that's going to lift me up. And we all get to decide that with our focus and our commitments every single day. Is it an anchor that we're going to tie to us? Or is it a balloon that's going to lift us up? We get to choose. So remember that. Remember that with your commitments. Remember with your focus on your dreams and your goals and your aspirations. You get to choose. There's going to be things that happen outside of your control. There's no doubt about it. But you get to choose what that means to you and how that's going to guide your commitment to achieve what you want to do in this life. So I loved this slide because I thought, yep, that speaks exactly to what we're talking about. You get to choose. You have the power. So commitment to your dreams is an act of self-love. It is. And it goes back to what I said before about having integrity for yourself. You've decided what your goals and your dreams and your aspirations are. And it doesn't, it can be simple. It doesn't have to be anything complex. It's things that we do every single day. But that is an act of loving yourself. And if we love ourselves and we have integrity for ourselves and our focus and our dreams, we will be able to spread that to everyone else that we see throughout our connections through the day. Our kids will see that. Our friends will see that. So commitment is an act of self-love and you get to decide with your commitments and with your focus, are you collecting anchors or are you collecting balloons? It's up to you, you get to decide. So have a wonderful, committed, lovely day, achieve your hopes, dreams and goals and love yourself along the way. Thank you.